So what's the deal with those videos you see from time to time in your recommended feed that are multiple hours long? Like some of them are as long as 7 hours and I'm over here trying to figure out how to get even a 10 minute video out once every few months. And I want to be clear here, these videos, well multiple hours in length, still contain a consistent well produced quality to them that you would expect from a video of normal length. These aren't your live streams or video game let's plays, these are actual video essays breaking down topics such as movies, TV shows, internet history, or YouTube drama. And yet I'm left wondering how anyone can have the time to watch something this long. I thought the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League was bad when it came to length, but there's literally YouTubers out there making videos that are longer than a franchise with a multi-million dollar budget. Let's start from the beginning. Long form content is something that has been around for many years. There are a lot of different types of media that can be defined as long form. Movies are the classic example, but TV shows, music albums, or even stage plays have been in the public eye for a long time as well and can also be considered long form in their own right. It wasn't until the advent of home computers and the internet that the general public started to gain access to the tools that allowed them to create their own media. I would argue that our current entertainment landscape is better off now than it has ever been in history. This is because the avenues in which we consume our content is more decentralized. As in, there are more content options than there ever have been. Everyday people having the ability to make high quality content has allowed more underground or forgotten genres of content to thrive in a way they've never been able to before. The media market has opened up to such a massive extent that if you have an idea that you think is your own, there is a good chance that it has already been done. Now just because someone has already utilized a certain idea in their own content doesn't mean that they have the ability to make it succeed in the way that maybe you can. This is sort of where I see the recent advent of long form content. It's an idea that's been around for a long time but didn't pick up traction until only recently. But what exactly counts as a long video? Or at least what is it that I have been referring to throughout this video? So videos being long is really nothing new. People have been making let's plays, podcasts, and live streams for many years now with great success. Clearly there is a market for content that fills a larger portion of the day. But the similarity between all of these types of content is that they are all less structured than a video review or essay and only require turning on a microphone and talking into it. Even if I'm underselling the amount of work that goes into making those genres worth anyone's time, it's still a very different process when compared to scripted content. The time required to make even a single video that is well scripted, recorded, edited, and uploaded is far greater than sitting down and talking. As such, the frequency at which this produced content comes out ends up being much less often. Because of this, for a channel that produces scripted content on a regular basis, it's usually only expected to result in a 10-20 to 20 minute video every now and then. These scripted videos are usually in genres such as movie reviews, video essays, and internet documentaries. But because the desire for long form content has slowly permeated different genres over time, it eventually had to come around to these genres as well. In the current year, it's not uncommon to see the occasional 2-7 to seven hour long video appear in your feed. But the time required to make such videos can range from a few months to even years in some cases. But YouTubers still have to make a living, so it's not unusual for these type of videos to be a side project. They might dedicate every other week to working on a larger project or at least have some kind of side content that still fills their viewers desire for content of some kind. But do people actually enjoy watching videos that are this long? These grand ideas for long videos, while tiresome to make, usually result in great reward. It's not uncommon for videos of this length to do outstandingly well when compared to the average viewer interaction that a content creator gets on their channel. That leads me to ask, how is it possible that a video this long can pull in more viewers, especially if the video itself has the same level of production quality that you would expect in a traditional video from the same creator? And with their successful nature in regard, how do people actually watch these videos? I want to be clear that I'm not inherently against these type of videos. I've watched plenty myself and I've even participated in making a full length documentary. I think part of the interest that people have in them is from a similar mindset found in binging culture. It's not unheard of for a person to watch the entire first season of a show or an entire movie trilogy in just a day or two. Some people have even raised concern over this type of lifestyle claiming that it's potentially unhealthy. And while I tend to agree that there are more productive ways to spend your time, it's also not the worst thing a person could be doing. Let's just say it like this, it's better to binge a TV series than to be half dead in a ditch somewhere hoping to make just enough money to satisfy your heroin addiction. But to answer the question, I think that long form content like this does better on a general level because it allows someone to have the binging convenience of a playlist or a series. 
On YouTube, videos that keep people watching for longer are promoted in the YouTube algorithm more often. That means they are more likely to show up in recommendations, on your home feed, or in your subscriptions if YouTube is still curating that. YouTube sees an advantage in having people on their website for longer because it means they are more likely to see more ads, which also means YouTube gets paid more. So they have all the incentive in the world to promote videos that are longer. And the reason longer videos are preferred is because it's been shown that people are statistically more likely to watch for a longer period of time if the video itself is long. So if a video is 25 minutes, the average viewer duration might only be 10 minutes, but if that same video was an hour, the average viewer duration would be expected to be higher, like 15 or 20 minutes. This is also why YouTube allows content creators to add multiple advertisements throughout the duration of their content. For many years, 10 minutes was considered the golden number because it wasn't until the 10 minute mark that content creators would be allowed to add in more than one advertisement. This led to YouTubers purposely extending their content out to the 10 minute mark just so they could make a little bit more money. While there was plenty of criticism of that practice at the time, the community has seemed to move past it in the current age. Understanding the popularity of the current advent of long form content requires a general level of understanding of YouTube history. It's commonly known among content creators that there was a time on YouTube when the most prominent statistic considered for whether the YouTube algorithm would promote a video or not was the click-through rate. The click-through rate is the number of times people have clicked on a video. This contributes to the views, and as such would create a snowball effect where the more people who saw a video, the more it would get promoted. It sounds reasonable when said, but in action it didn't work as expected. Views having this much importance was incentivizing people to worry only about how their title and thumbnail looked without giving the same thought and consideration to the content itself. Ultimately, this created an environment where clickbait was the driving force behind a video's success. To counteract this, YouTube started tracking how long viewers were staying on a video and used that as the primary statistic behind content promotion. While this was met with its own criticisms at the time, it undeniably worked against the level of clickbait that was happening at the time. But it also drastically changed the prominent culture of YouTube. What ended up happening was shorter videos became increasingly hard to succeed with on YouTube, and longer videos did incredibly well. This led to gaming content dominating the site as they were the primary community making longer videos for their audience. Even though the gaming community was the first to feel this change in a positive way, it wasn't long before other types of content started to get longer as well. Vlogs and prank videos that were longer than a couple minutes started to see more success over time. Then podcasts eventually found their place in the media landscape as well. Putting this progression on a timeline, I'd say that from the inception of YouTube to around 2012 was somewhat of a wild west. Pretty much anything could be successful on YouTube for better or worse. Then from 2012 to around 2014, gaming dominated basically the entire website, with it producing some of the top channels that we see today like PewDiePie, Markiplier, or Jacksepticeye. From 2014 to around 2016, vlogs and prank videos had a major impact and partially helped create what was considered the commentary community back in the day. Then from 2016 to around 2018, the 10 minute video really took hold of the community. From 2018 to the time of this video, the length of content in just about every genre but gaming has slowly increased, leading us to where we are today. A major piece of this puzzle can also be seen in traditional media. YouTube has been on a war against traditional television for many years now, and this is why I believe TV hosts became so popular and have almost had an immunity on YouTube. They do better over here on YouTube than they do on live TV, and then there is much more incentive for them to stay, which also makes the total overall YouTube viewership much higher. Now it's important to know that there was once a time when YouTube was seen as more of a place to find short form content, unlike what you would expect from movies or television. It was new to people at the time, and was a market that definitely had its place on YouTube. But in YouTube's effort to control more of the media landscape, they need to fulfill not just the market for short form content, but long form content as well. If 2016 to 2018 was the era of the 10 minute video, then 2018 to our modern day can be marked by YouTube's attempt to build a bridge in both directions. Because yes, they don't just want long videos, they want short videos as well. Because even though the market for content that is shorter than the length of a TV show was pretty much established by YouTube, they missed the opportunity to capitalize on videos that are even shorter than that. While some may have seen the popularity of the Vine app as a strong indication of this, it wasn't until apps like TikTok absolutely exploded in popularity that YouTube had any cause to put up some kind of competition. These days, it's not just YouTube that is some kind of short form content function, it's almost every social app you can think of. Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, and TikTok, of course. Can a video be too long? Yes, it absolutely can. 
I'd actually like to use an example from YouTube's history to exemplify this point. Back when YouTubers were being criticized for making videos that were just over 10 minutes, people saw its potential to reduce the quality that was being offered in the content YouTubers were making. The fear was that instead of making 5 minute video that was entertaining, they would make a 10 minute video with the same level of effort, but stretched out to be considerably more boring. For a while this was actually happening, most notably in the commentary community. Instead of using 5 minutes to make 5 points, the creator would just spread the same amount of points throughout those 10 minutes with the intention of purposely wasting time. Overall, this led to people repeating themselves in their videos just so they could reach their minute goal. While that problem in particular has mostly resolved itself, a similar criticism has been levied against videos that are breaking multiple hours in length. However, it should be said that the argument is a little more complicated than the previous example. Repeating yourself in videos is, of course, looked down upon. It's seen as a waste of time and the lack of ability to create new discussion around a topic. But what's worse than repeating yourself throughout the course of a 10 minute long video? Repeating yourself throughout the course of a 2 hour long video. There is a certain amount of, forgive the use of this term, clout around making a video that is multiple hours in length. Aside from the previously described increase in views and attention, it's almost seen as somewhat of a badge of honor. It acts as proof of devotion to some degree. After all, who would spend that amount of time to make a video that long if they weren't dedicated to being as thorough as possible about the topic at hand? Well, that question touches on a debate about whether the length of a video indicates the depth of a video. Theoretically, you can pick any subject you want and talk about that alone for as long as you want. The way this is possible is by increasing the detail at which you discuss said topic. For example, if I were to describe this photo to you, I could say that it's a picture of mountains. Nothing about that description is wrong, but it also doesn't give you the full idea of what's happening here. There are many ways you can explain this picture in greater detail. For example, I could talk about the fact that there are clouds and trees in the photo. I could talk about the fact that I am in the photo. I could explain what mountains they are in particular and why I was there. I could go on to explain who took the photo and what type of photo it is. I could explain the elements in the photo, like what time of day it was, and what type of clouds these are, and what type of wildlife inhabits that particular area, and what type of trees those are. The list of different ways I can describe this photo are more numerous than I can even take the time to list here. But I'd like to separate each explanation into degrees of relevance. The more particular you get with your explanation, the less it has to do with the picture as a whole. If I only describe the mountains to you, and everything there was to know about them, that wouldn't help you understand the photo overall. This is because the photo itself isn't defined solely by the mountains, but the many parts that make up its scenery. But with that said, the mountains still have a higher degree of relevance than what type of clouds are in the photo. The reason for this is because the mountains help tell the story of the photo. The mountains being there is not the only reason, but a major reason why the photo was taken. The same can't be said for the clouds. If I were to go on a long tangent about what type of clouds these are, and what the weather was like that day, it could fairly be seen as off topic. This is because there is a line where the degrees of relevance go into the negatives, and become off subject. The reason I believe it's important to understand this explanation is because talking about topics that are off subject is a fair criticism of videos of such length. If you are going to make a video that is 3 hours long, it's reasonable for people to want that discussion to at least pertain to the overall narrative that the video is emphasizing. It's certainly possible that some of these multi hour long videos are criticizable for going off topic, but as long as the subject of discussion in these videos is anywhere above the zero degrees of relevance, it's fair game. However, you could say that they are scraping the bottom of the barrel by addressing every possible topic of a discussion that is above that zero degree line just for the sake of making their video longer. Or could it be argued that this is what makes a video more in depth? Well, it depends on the most important piece of the puzzle that I haven't discussed or brought up yet, the videos themselves. If the video of the length we have been discussing is guilty of repetition, then it should be criticized for that. However, it's reasonable and even possible for a video of this length to continue making points that aren't identical over the span of the video. But the problem isn't always necessarily with the validity of the points being made, but with the way they go about making these points. If I have a criticism of a movie that I feel is justified, the viewer may be satisfied with a brief overview of three examples that emphasize the argument I'm trying to make. Why should I proceed to use every possible example that falls above the zero degree line of relevance when my viewers would feel that I can justify my argument with just three? In simpler terms, 
why make a five hour video to reach a specific conclusion when the same conclusion could be made in 30 minutes? Believe it or not, there is actually somewhat of a logic behind making videos this long, and it's caused by the viewers who can't be satisfied with just three mere examples. There is a minority of people who, when watching an abridged review of a movie, TV series, or YouTuber, don't believe the content being criticized in such video was represented fairly. There is some truth in the idea that you can manipulate how the quality of a piece of media appears by selectively choosing the examples you criticize. I want to avoid getting into the subjective versus objective argument here, but I will say that within reason, people can and have been criticized for falsely representing the media they are reviewing. Manipulation of content is best achieved through the removal of context. If you don't know how a scene in a movie started, it can make you have a very different opinion about the sequence of events that unfolds. That's why sometimes having just a few examples to justify an opinion about a piece of media can still lead to debate about its justification. So to avoid this debate completely, why not just review the whole thing from start to finish? Well, that's exactly what people do. This way it can't be argued that any context is missing when every possible angle by which there is to cover a piece of media has been explored. For example, if the right opinion were to only use a few examples of the insanity that is Nekikado Avocado, a viewer could claim that he's merely picking his worst moments to unjustly make him out to be worse than he really is. But when he literally covers his entire online career, there is no longer any room for this type of criticism. But in that sense, there is also somewhat of a completionist aspect to making a video that is this long, like the work by Friedrich Knudsen in his Down the Rabbit Hole series, or the articulation of Mahler in his media discussions. It's this idea of leaving no stone unturned, a complete documentation of someone's life or career, a total listing and proper argumentation of a movie and all its flaws. In the end, I believe it depends on the individual video. There are some that I can undoubtedly say are a waste of time, but many of them have a quality to them that respects the viewer's time. I think immediately writing off a video because of its length only serves to make assumptions about the contents that are actually being covered within them. Making long videos is quite literally the opposite of a hot take. Instead of throwing an opinion out into the wind, they serve to take a deeper, more thought out look into what makes a piece of media what it is. Could some videos come to the same conclusion in a shorter amount of time? Yes, absolutely. Could some videos just consist of repetition and subject matter that's off topic? Yeah, for sure. Are all videos that are multiple hours in length like this? By no means. It has to be judged on an individual basis. And I'm sorry to say this, but it's not a judgment that can be made without just watching the video. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone.